we're not in Florida anymore, how to winterize 3D printers with some Harbor Freight hacks and 3D prints. Well, welcome to Oregon. It is 28 degrees outside. It's definitely not Florida weather. So I ran into an interesting challenge with these printers. <clears throat> Let me bring them into frame for you. <clears throat> these are the two CR10s, the main CR10 and the CR10 mini, and they have very big beds and a completely open space. And I started printing and a couple of small prints came out okay, but what happened was with even slightly larger prints, the prints started to pick up as if they were ABS, but this was PLA and it just shouldn't happen. So I did a little bit of research and I found out that PLA likes to be above about 59 degrees to actually adhere so you get something more like this than something like this. And in here in the garage, it was between 35 and 45 degrees. So we were having all sorts of problems. These printers back here, um, the Zortrax and the Ultimaker are pretty in close, so they're maintaining some of that heat. Again, I'm not going for ABS heat. I'm just going to main, trying to maintain heat in the 59 to 65 degree temperature range. And these maintain the heat pretty well. The Lulls by. over here does pretty well because it just has a tiny bed, and right now it has the camera sitting on top of it because I've been moving things around. So the idea was how could I keep the heat in on these printers. And I did an experiment, and the experiment I did was with a bunch of, of just house blankets, and that worked pretty well. So I decided that, all right, let's, let's use thinner blankets because I have a certain amount of space I have. So I went out and got a couple of Harbor Freight blankets. I actually bought four because I wasn't sure whether two would make it. The littler ones are about five bucks. The bigger ones are about eight dollars. I had a whole pile of these dollar um, clamps and then I printed, I'll show you the sensor in a second, I printed a bunch of these standoffs. I printed 16 of these standoffs because this piece of the printer comes out too far over the edge and I didn't want the cloth to be bumping into it so the standoffs attach like that and we'll keep the cloth over the edge. And then finally, I got a little sensor. I got two of them. One of them is hanging over there. You may or may not be able to see it on frame. And I got this, and I'll have links to these, of course. Um, this is a little tiny sensor that tracks temperature over time. And I'm gonna keep one inside and one outside. And I also hung a light and actually a baby monitor to test it with to be able to watch the cameras. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna put the blankets around this thing to build our warm enclosure.
Well, I'll tell you, winter isn't just coming, winter is here. It is 28 degrees outside and it is 43 degrees in here according to the ambient temperature sensor. The print has been running overnight. It's been about 20 hours printing on the CR10 Mini. And according to the baby cam, it's looking pretty good, but I have not yet seen it in person. So we're about to unwrap it and take a look at what the uh, winterizing cover that we've built has done to make this printer, this very open printer, stay warm enough to print. So it is looking good. Let's move this up here and see if we can lock this up here pretty well. There we go. And let's get this side up here. Well, it is looking great. I mean, that is gorgeous. That is a really nice print. Well, I wanna say that I am quite pleased with how this rig turned out. It is a bit hacky, uh, but it's also inexpensive. It's under 50 bucks with all the gadgets from Harbor Freight, plus the flashlight and other things that I use to sort of keep an eye on things. Uh, the two um, CR10s worked out fabulously, even though they have both have large open build plates, which would suffer from substantial heat loss in a very cold environment. By keeping them inside here, we were able to keep it above uh, 60 to 70 degrees, and that meant that the result of this print is, is, is awesome. It's really awesome. So a special shout out to the folks at GearBest for providing both the CR10 and the CR10 Mini, without which this experiment could not have been done. Uh, and also, I want to mention that you do want to keep an eye on how you put these things together to make sure that you have appropriate fire safety gear and, and uh, fire extinguisher and things like that. The various prints that are used to support both the printers and the standoffs will be on Thingiverse. So you can take a look at the article or the show notes and go ahead and download those if you want to use them. And the metal cart is just a metal cart. This one was probably bought from Lowe's, but it could have been Home Depot or mail order. I really don't know. It's been around for a long time. Uh, and there you go. Two CR10s able to print in a winterized environment where winter has definitely come. It is again, 28 degrees outside and the prints are gorgeous. For ZDNet's DIY IT discovery series in 3D printing, my name is David Gewertz. Have yourself a very nice day and stay warm this winter.